How's it going everybody? My name is Isaac and today I'm going to show you how I set up my equipment for astrophotography. So as most of you know, uh, I have to set up and tear down at, after each imaging session, uh, both here at my home and uh, when we go out to, uh, to Alpha Scorpia, the desert. So I decided to go ahead and do a video today, um, just covering how I set up, uh, what process is all in that, and just any tips and tricks that I may have learned over the years, just because I've been pretty much tear, uh, setting up and tearing down for the last almost, almost six years. So. Unfortunately, you know, I don't have an uh, observatory like others. Um, you know, I don't have, or I don't have Bordeaux Three Skies right in the, my backyard, or I don't have the physical uh, capability to carry 500 pounds of gear from my house out to my yard each and every time. So let's go ahead and get into it, guys. All right, you guys. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to actually build my imaging train first. So. Uh, you'll notice it's already built here. Um, this is my William Optics uh, Xenostar 73. It's a doublet refractor, which has a focal length of 430 millimeters and an f-stop at 5.9. So um, as you can see here, I already have everything built. So what I like to do um, is I like to, well, this is obviously the telescope um, I, right here attached on the back is the uh, William Optics uh, fuel flattener. So I have attached that to, uh, to my telescope. And um, this is a, a one to one flattener, so it doesn't have any reducing power. Um, all it is, it just uh, creates a flat field. So I have that, and then I have my ASI uh, 6200, that's the full frame camera, followed by um, the, the, the filter wheel, or the five position filter wheel, filter, filter wheel uh, doing some two inch filters. So I have all that, and basically that's just a thread, it, it threads onto uh, to the telescope. What you see here now is going to be the EAF, the electronic autofocuser. So um, this is this is something new that that I've um, been kind of learning and uh, using. I've pretty much maybe only uh, used it about three times. So this is pretty new equipment for me. And then here I have uh, the guide scope, and uh, this is a 50 millimeter guide scope uh, followed by um, a guide camera. It's a GP cam, and um, you'll see here that I have this William Optics um, kind of like saddle and um, I actually purchased purchased this separate because uh, my, my William uh, the Z73 came with the rings kind of like here they, they they attach right onto the to the rings here the the blue rings of the telescope so I actually just upgraded because this was just more of uh, I don't know it had more of that solid look but also it raised uh, the guide scope and that way it won't it wouldn't hit my um, my, my my filter wheel so and just a little bit of upgrades that that I uh, that I did, but I like to uh, um, build my imaging train. The very first thing that I like to do is just build it, and that way it's ready when I go outside. Uh, I'm not wasting too much time just building this because it could take like maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just depending on your skill level. Um, I know when, when I was uh, uh, brand new into this, it took me a little bit more time. Uh, but also, you also want to get as close as to focus um, that that you can. Especially, like for example. Um, the, the guide scope, I have it marked here on, uh, with, with, with the black um, Sharpie. And basically, so when I insert the guide scope or the guide camera into the guide scope, I know relative where it's close to focus and that way you're not necessarily spending too much, too much time focusing. So on the telescope, I, uh, since it's electronic autofocuser, uh, it's not focused right now just because I haven't been doing any imaging, but I do, uh, you do wanna have it as close to focus as, as you can. So. Uh, on the, if you have a, a William Optics um, telescope, you'll notice that you have um, markings. Well, at least on mine, I have markings of the millimeters um, of how much backspace there is. And so this one uh, with the 6200, it's about 63 and a half millimeters of back of uh, back focus. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I I put it on the on the telescope itself. But here it is. And then uh, on the bottom here, I have a lost Mandy plate. Um, the the William Optics, uh, the Z73 came with the uh, dovetail uh, dovetail plate initially, um, but I did upgrade I did upgrade to the Lost Mandy. The Lost Mandy just is a little bit more sturdy, 
and then that dovetail plate is really really small is really short so um, i couldn't achieve balance especially with all the equipment that i'm that i'm that i'm running so um, i like to do that first and uh, let's go ahead and go into uh setting up the the, the mount now all right you guys so this is gonna be my two inch tripod um i'm gonna show you how i get set up with the ieq 45 pro that's an ioptron um so the, the mount itself is pretty sturdy it weighs about uh 15 pounds or so um and once again this is a two inch uh, tripod uh you see here this is going to be for uh for you to point north so you want to roughly point north when you're actually setting up your your uh, your tripod and so um it, every mountain is pretty much different now um on mine like for example jason has the atlas eqg so his he has a thread uh, for example like this here and this would actually come right here on the bottom it would come up and it would thread onto his to his mount and that way it can mount it down my ioptron is a little bit different um the, the eq6 I, I believe as well they thread up here with with the with the tripod spreader but mine doesn't so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to actually thread um the the tripod spreader and that way um i can have it here on my uh That way I can go, go ahead and have it here on my tripod. So, all right guys. And the next thing I like to do is um, I like to uh, with, this is a torpedo level and um, I like to go ahead and level the, the tripod. Okay. So the way I like to do it is um, obviously the torpedo level is here and on each leg, for example, the back the side, the side, you just want to put the, the level here. Okay. Uh, you put it here. Okay. So, you know, depending what you see, you can adjust uh, the height of the leg, for example, the back leg. There, there should be some adjustment knobs and um, you can raise it, you can lower it. You go like, for example, the, the, the back and then you go to here, to this leg here, the same thing, raise it, lower it. And then um, the, 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 la the last one here, raise it, lower it, and just make sure that, you know, you, uh, you go again and just make sure everything is level on all three on, on all three legs so just so you can once again have the best balance now there are a lot of mounts that have that bubble level so um it just really depends on your specific uh equipment on mine on my eye up trying it does have the bubble level in the front it's relatively close um, when i'm feeling lazy i just kind of <laughs> leave it as is and i just go by that but when i like to be precise especially when i like to you know image all night i really like to use the, the bubble level so once you're level, you wanna go ahead and bring them out on. All right guys, so here it is. This is the IEQ45 uh, Pro. So I have the mount here. And so um, it, this is how it is in the box. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on the top here. Okay. So remember the that little pin in the front that pointed north, right? So um, right here on the bottom, if you can see, that's where you wanna put um, that little pin here on the north, okay? So with the mount here and once again my my um this mount specifically has the holder screws right here on the on the side so i gotta get these holder screws and that way i can pretty much clamp it down and it can be secure so all right you guys and then once you have the the mount secured with the bolts or you know however you secure it um for example right here in, in my ioptron i have the counterweight shaft here so i take it out from the top And then um, you just go ahead and put it, install it here. At this point, um, you want to go ahead and leave everything uh, unlocked as far as the clutches. Uh, for example, the clutch for deck, um, you want to leave it unlocked. And then the, the clutch for RA, you want to leave them unlocked as well. Um, the ioptron manuals um and pretty much all the manuals indicate that you want to leave it unlocked while while you're doing this just so you won't damage any of the gears or the worms and stuff so um so right now what i'm doing is i'm getting the there's a little on the on the end of this there's a little like shoe that stops the counterweight from falling so i'm just taking the dot this off that way i can go ahead and put the counterweight on all right and so i got the counterweight here and because i already know my setup um I, re I already know where to put the counterweight but you can kind of just get do a guesstimate if you never really set up your your equipment before um but in my case since i already know um it's usually about two fingers here and you just kind of tighten that just make sure it's on there before 
you go ahead and put back the, the little stopper. And it's important that you put back the little stopper because you just never know. All right. Okay. And once again, you still want to, you still want to leave the RA, um, uh, loose uh, just so, because you already have the counterweight. So obviously when you load up your, your telescope and everything like that, well, it's not going to flop. And, um, I actually had an accident with my Newtonian like that. Luckily I was able to catch it, but still you don't want all that precious gear to go to waste just because of a, of a crazy error like that. So that's, that's a good tip. All right. So now let's go ahead and load up the, the telescope since it's already, uh, built the imaging train, right? And here it is. And so we just slide this on here. And then once again, if you don't know where kind of like the perfect balance is, um, it's fine. It's just as long as you, you know, get a good guesstimate. I mean, all this is just trial and error at the same time. So, um, mine here is about 38 and once again this last magnet plate has these these little numbers for reference so once again because i already know i'm just going to go ahead and put it there but i'll still demonstrate the balance and you want to tighten this you want to keep it secure until you tighten it once again you don't want any accidents okay all right cool so that's that okay so you got everything there and you just want to see you see you see how it well already in deck it's out of balance so because it goes here so in this case, uh, while we load up all our, our cords and everything else for, for that balance, we can lock the declination clutch for just right now. Um, RA, I'm not too worried about because it's, it's pretty sturdy, but if you prefer to lock it while you load up your, um, your cords and everything like that, you can too. So, all right guys, and I have my, my cords pretty much prepped here. Um, I do use, let me show you real quick. So I do use this uh, braided wire to kind of do the, the cable management. So here it is right here. And um, I use these little, um, these little Velcro ties as well. So um, this has helped me a lot with not only uh, cable management, but at the same time for, for balancing as well. So uh, let me show you how I put it here on the, on the, on the equipment. Okay, so this is gonna be the, the USB and then I have the power, okay, so um, this USB goes to the filter and I, I don't have it right now, but I have one coming to the camera as well as a hub. And then that, that, uh, that USB hub goes over here. So that's the way I have my cameras. And once again, or the, the camera, that's the way I have my, um, my cords. And once again, I have this little, um, Velcro tape just to kind of hold it together. Um, I do, if you if you can see here, um, I do have, let me zoom in on that. If you can see here, I have this little adhesive clip and I just clipped it onto the, the, the bracket here. And um, I like to put my cords inside right here. So just, just as is as so. Um, and then once again, from here, I just have that braided um, kind of cable, cable management going here. And then I have it all tied down here on the leg. Now, this is all to your choice. This is just a, suge a suggestion from me. Um, just because it has worked really, really well for me. Um, and, and essentially the, the goal for all of this is not necessarily to, um, you know, have your, your cables all nice and neat. I mean, it, it looks good, but the whole point is that the, the weight of the cables are not dragging your mount down. This is so important when it comes to balancing. And this is really crucial when it comes to guiding as well. There's a lot of factors that go into, to uh, guiding, but the, the most important is going to be that balance. So over the years of you know um kind of trying it out this is what well what, what works well for me now jason if you follow him um i actually helped him with his uh, kind of like cable management and then he just has it where it's just like you know uh, from the camera and then one down to the leg and he has just the weight tied there now that's working really 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 well for him i mean his guiding is in the 0 0.7 0 0.8 range which is fine for his focal length it just really depends on your focal length, where you want to be when it comes to the guiding. And that's, that's just a whole nother thing, but, uh, you just really have to kind of figure it out when it comes to your cable management. But I hope that, you know, that kind of gave you, uh, some idea of how to kind of do stuff. So here it is, you guys. So got the cable. Okay. Here. And then it holds it here just so it can be close to the, to the mount but it just looks so much better than the cables just dragging down. And that's what, you, that's what you want to avoid. So, all right, let's go ahead and go to balancing now. All right, guys. So now that we have uh, our telescope, our setup, 
our chords, everything, it's time to balance. Now, when I was a newbie astrophotographer, um, one of the hardest things that I had to do was balance. Just because it was all over you, including even the Ioptron handbook that I got for the mount. It always said to balance a different way. Now, what I've learned is that you want to balance as you're going to image. And that's why even though I don't have it here, I recommend that you guys balance as close as to focus as you can. I mean, this is so crucial because think about it. If you have 60 millimeters of backspace, that's going to add weight to the back of it. And that's going to completely change your your um, your your balance on and declination. And that's really going to affect your guiding and everything. And that's something that I struggled with uh, just because I was brand new to telescopes. When I first started, I was brand new to photography. I was brand new to any of all this stuff. So I found it pretty difficult. So what you want to do is you want to balance as you're going to image with your cords, with all your gear, with what whatever it is. So with that being said, you want to go ahead and take off your caps. Okay. When I take off your caps, you want to make sure that you're in balance or you're in, you know, pretty much focus your cords uh, with your guide scope and with your imaging train, even though it's not showing it here, you still want to be where it is. Okay. Now I like to first go ahead and balance in declination. Remember declination is north and south, right ascension is east and west. Okay. So in declination, I turn the mount or the, the deck. Okay. Just so here. Okay. And if I let this go, it's going to drop. So this means if it goes forward, this means it's, it's front heavy and it needs to go back. So you want to go ahead and make the adjustment. Okay. So if this is, front heavy, we want to go ahead and move it back. And this is the same process I do as you guys look, watch all my videos at the desert. <laughs> all right. So once again, I let it go. It's still front heavy. Okay. So you just want to keep making those adjustments. Now, depending on your mount, it's going to be different, right? Uh, for my CEM 25, uh, the slight adjustment is going to throw it off a lot, but with the IEQ 45, it's going to be a little bit. Okay. So this is more like it see how it move and there's not a lot so i like to do both ways so for example like if i have to image this way you know so it looks pretty good so see how it just stops now you can get really detailed with your balance which i like to do but it just really depends on your mount you after balancing after you know setting up you have to take some time take a couple of days and that way you really can know how your mount tracks your mount behaves and then ultimately that way you can make the final adjustments in your phd too or just once again in if you do pack or anything else so so i'm pretty happy with it well okay you see how it's just moving a little bit front so i'm just going to move it a little bit to the back again and once again because i'm so close you just want to do very minute uh, adjustments just very, very small. That way it's not throwing it off and you just have to do more work, so. And notice how I have everything loose. The, the deck clutch is loose and then the, the or excuse me, the deck clutch is loose and then the right ascension uh, clutch is loose as well. So it's good, good. Okay, it's just a little bit off. I think it's the cord, the cord is dragging it down. So go, All right? So once you're satisfied with the deck, which we're pretty good. Uh, we want to go ahead and leave it parallel and then lock it. And then this is how I balance the, the RA. So the RA is the same thing, guys. So because, because I, I know my setup already, it's pretty imbalanced, but it's the same thing. So let's just say, for example, I move the, the counterweight here. You see how it's just automatically dropping. You don't want to damage your, your stuff, but you see how it's dropping. So in this case, if it's this side heavy, you want to move the counterweight to the other side, right? It's still moving slightly just a little bit here. So once again, you still want to move it down and you just got to check it, right? Um, so it's still moving down again. So as I was around right here, you can kind of move it now. So it's good, good that way. And uh, so it's still slightly telescope heavy. So you want to move it the counterweight this way. Okay. Right, so that's pretty good. Yep, that's, that's beautiful. That's usually where I get it. So, and the other thing too is like, you can even move. So once again, because I've had my mount for about three years now, um, you can just kind of have like feel it, feel it here. And then it's just like, if you know, if you feel like one side is heavier, one side moves, you know, uh, 
a little bit smoother than the other, then adjust the, the appropriate, the counterweight to the appropriate position and that way everything is just kind of smoothed out. So, so once all that's done, you want to go ahead and um, loosen the deck clutch and you want to put it into what's called the zero position. So the zero position or the home position, and that's when the, um, the telescope is pointing north and then the um, and then declination and then in right ascension, the, the counterweight shaft is pointing directly down. So um, iOptron, if you guys own an IEQ45, uh, iOptron does have on the hand controller they do have where you can it's a it's a ra assisted uh balancing uh i found that my specific balancing works a lot better than than the than, than the than hand controller does or the system does but however if, if you're if you're a newbie um or if you're newer to astrophotography that might just help i mean it's 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 very close it's not you know to my standard but at the same time it will really help you so i'm not too sure if any of the newer options have that i know the cem 25p doesn't have it even though that's continued as, as well uh but maybe your mount has something else but if not you know go ahead and do that so and then if it's early like right now well obviously there's clouds you just want to put your dust caps back on and then after that, what I like to do is I just like to go ahead and finish it all up with uh, putting the cables and everything else. All right, guys. Well, I really hope that um, this was helpful or if not, that maybe I gave you some uh, tips for, you know, the, the season uh, astrophotographers or maybe just some ideas. Um, I know that during the course of my time in this hobby, I've always picked up from somebody um, and I just kind of incorporated it into what, what I do today. Um, a lot of things will probably much come with time um what i've learned specifically is that like you know you try something and maybe you get results but then you're like you know you have another idea and you try something else and then boom like that's that's the best results for your specific equipment so there's what i want to say is that there's no real answer to like how you're gonna set up your specific setup right um it could work for me um it could work for it could not work for you um, the way you know i have it but once again, this is just more for like a guidance and any ideas that you have. Um, there's a lot of people that have their cables this a whole other way, but they have good tracking and they've got good guiding. Um, so it's really important that you take the time to really know your equipment and, you know, don't, as much as you want to get outside when you have your your mount and everything else is like you, you got to have practice runs. You got to set that expectation where you're going to have practice runs because sometimes um, it's it's not going to go as planned and sometimes you have to kind of waste that clear night. So I always myself, I always set an expectation of like when I get new gear, when I get something, I was like a test night, test night. And then if everything goes well, then it turns into an, uh, into an imaging night. So a couple of other tips that I have would be uh, don't let your significant other know how much all this shit cost. Um, the other thing, you just have to remember that not everything is a one size fits all. Um, once you get to know your, your gear, your equipment, everything will, will pretty much fall into place. So um, once again, I hope this is useful. I hope this is helpful. Please shoot me an email or a comment if you have any additional questions, especially if, if, you're, newer, if you're new to astrophotography. Um, I'm also on Instagram. You can shoot me a message and I'll try to help you with, with whatever I can. Um, but I, I hope that uh, you've all had a a very good start to your new year um it's been cloudy here since december 3rd and then we got one clear night in january which is the the first it was awesome but then it's clouds until i don't know i don't know when hopefully it's not cloudy for the next time out to our trip at alpha scorpii but i really appreciate you guys watching really appreciate you guys all your, and all your guys support and uh and so yeah until our next outing clear skies Man, this is this is so cool. I wonder what Jason's doing. Oh, it's Isaac. Hey, Jason. What's going on, man? Hey Isaac, how's it going man? Uh, no, man, I'm just uh, setting up right now. Uh, what you up to? 
Oh, dude, I uh, I just got that uh, that observatory installed, man. It's uh, it's looking pretty cool, dude. You should come check it out. The observatory? What observatory? You mean the playhouse? No, dude. What do you What do you mean, man? No, no. I I told you it was a it was it was a dual purpose. Yeah, I I got the I got my telescope and everything here, man. I I'm just. Oh my god, dude! Just come over. Hello, Jason. Jason. I need some help with Nina, so I'm gonna call Joe. <laughs> I feel like Obi-Wan Kenobi in this. Luke, use the force. Oh. Who's this? It's probably spam. Oh. Hey, Joe. How's it going, man? Hey, Isaac. Is that you? Yeah, this is uh, one half of the, of the Scorpion, brother. Hey, what's up, man? What are you up to, brother? Hey, yeah, so listen. I, uh, I was going to ask you. You know how you, uh, the other day you were helping me with Nina? And uh, you were telling me that you can program your your uh, your roof to open in your observatory. Yeah, so I I just got an observatory here, and um, I was wondering if you can help me out, man. Yeah, yeah, man, that's so cool, dude. You got an obsy? That's freaking awesome. Oh yeah, of course I could help you out. Hey. That's awesome, man. Are you in your obsy now? Dude, really appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Uh-huh. Perfect. So here's what you do. In Nina, just find the dome controller and connect it to the RCCI interface if it's a roll-off roof observatory. Uh, if you're in there, can I, can I get a pic of what you got so I kind of have an idea? Oh yeah, dude. Let me uh, let me let me show you a photo real quick, yeah. Oh, dude, jo Joe's gonna freaking love this. This is awesome. All right. All right. All right, Joe. I messaged you, man. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, for sure. I'm so excited for you, man. Okay, I got it. Yeah, let me see. Um, um, dude, are, are you messing with me? Are you messing with me, man? This is, this is a playhouse. No, dude, no. I, I, I told the same thing to Jason, dude. Like, it's, it, it, it's a dual purpose, man. It's a dual purpose. All right. So like, no, no I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you it's a dual purpose. Hey. Uh, I'm sorry, man. I don't, I don't think I can help you with this one, buddy. Um, all right, Joe. All right, man. All right. Well, I just I just wanted to give it a shot then. Hey, Isaac. Are, are you feeling okay, man? Maybe you should go over to Jason's observatory. No, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine, Joe. I'm I, I I'm feeling good, man. Okay. I'll talk to you later, Joe. Okay, bye. Okay, Isaac. You take care, man. All right. Bye. Wow. <sighs> huh. Well, maybe I should do the, the manual removal, huh? Let's try that. Ugh. 